Hello and welcome to another edition of Pelham School District Today. My name is Chip McGee. I uh, have the pleasure of being the superintendent here in Pelham. And uh, today our topic is um, the Wonders Reading Program uh, at the elementary school uh, being uh, implemented uh, this year thanks to the support of uh, uh, the uh, good people in town um, voted for it last March. Uh, and I've got the people who are on the front line of doing it, uh, a few of them, uh, here to talk a little bit about uh, how it's going and uh, uh, what it's like. So I thought we'd start by going around. Laura, if you sure. could start, introduce yourself. I'm Laura Montanelli. I teach third grade here at Pelham Elementary School. And I'm Sarah Miranda. I'm the assistant superintendent. I'm Wendy Henderson. I teach first grade. And Carrie Struth, one of the assistant principals. All right, so thank you each for being here. Um, Sarah, I'm going to start with you. Uh, uh, so I've got a question right out of the gate. Um, could you just tell us a little bit about, just give us the, the parameters, like what are we doing this year? Uh, what did we have last year? Just tell us about what the Wonders implementation looks like from the 30,000 foot perspective. So prior to this year, we had grades three through five using a previous version of Wonders. Mm -hmm. and this year, we were able to bring on grades um, one and two with an updated version. Mm -hmm. um, and so far, we have provided professional development to kick off the year, mm -hmm. and the teachers are beginning to start using the program. Yeah. So it's um, no kindergarten? Nope. Nope. And uh, doesn't go up to the uh, memorial at all? No. All right. Um, and so hadn't been in uh, first or second grade previously. So that's a big change. Yes. Uh, so <laughs> Wendy, will you tell me a little bit about your life has changed quite a bit uh, in terms of the reading program. Could you talk to me just about yes. what it's been like? It, it truly has, um, just because this is a very comprehensive, mm -hmm. organized program. Not that we weren't um, teaching our children well in the past. I don't want you to get that idea no. because we were doing a fantastic job with our guided reading and the previous program we were using. Mm -hmm. um, but this has everything in it that we could possibly need to mm -hmm. teach our first graders and, and be the best teachers. It's very organized mm -hmm. for us. Um, we have big books for our, our little kids so we can read as a group mm -hmm. and do a lot of shared reading. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of shared writing, mm -hmm. which is, is huge. We, we actually have booklets some called Reading Writing Companions. Mm -hmm. So as we're projecting things on our Promethean board, the kids can write in their own books. Mm -hmm and mark things in the book, which is wonderful for them. So they're really, they're excited about those things, getting to, because mostly we tell them don't write in books, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So they get to write in these, which is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, we have anthologies of literature as well, which have, they have good quality literature. Mm -hmm. um, using our wonders, we call them wonders words. Some teachers are still calling them other things, high frequency words or sight yep. words. Yep. But, in our class, we call them Wonder Words, and um, they're recognizing those as they read, which is super exciting for a first grade teacher. Yeah. You're, like, you're actually knowing those words, and, and they're what realizing... What are the words on the, on the um, Wonder Words or Sight Words? Well, those are just things like um, some of them follow rules of phonics, mm -hmm. so you can, you can sound them out. Mm -hmm. Some of them don't, so you have words like all and call and under and day. Mm -hmm. So you, you have lots of different words mm -hmm. that we use a lot mm -hmm. as we're learning how to read. Mm -hmm. um, so we have have those pieces of it. We have wonderful digital pieces. So there's some really high quality videos that go with each unit. Mm -hmm. um, the pet patrol, it's called in first grade. So it's, it's characters and they take care of a pet store mm -hmm. and they're teaching us things about um, SEL. It's, or it's the social emotional learning piece that kind of goes with it as well, which mm -hmm. is nice. Um, One thing, though, have, I've heard, because uh, I'm not teaching it myself, uh, is that the comprehensiveness, uh, that means, you know, that there's so many parts to it. It's, it's got a writing element. It's got a reading element. It's got uh, nonfiction uh, and fiction. fiction. It's got a bunch of different uh, uh, genres of reading that you deal with, particularly at different levels. Um, and it's got... Uh, a, a, uh, additional uh, tools for English language learners mm -hmm. or reteaching uh, advanced work that it can be overwhelming in terms of material management. Um, uh, how is it going like just working through all this stuff either of you? Uh, I can yeah, speak yeah. on that. You've been doing it longer I than have, I have. I actually <laughs> so. have been doing it a long time so in my previous district yeah. I mm -hmm. actually used Reading Wonders the old version and mm -hmm. 
I'm very excited that first grade, second grade, all the grade levels besides kindergarten are doing this. I taught second grade before, prior to third grade. And these kids, if you up the ante, you have a high expectation, they will rise to meet it. Mm -hmm. And at second grade, they were responding to reading yeah. as second graders because they were in first grade, they had reading wonders. They are building, it's building blocks. Yeah. They, as we're teaching them these foundational skills starting in first grade, by the time they come to third grade, we can rise, they can get even higher. We can build upon each grade level. And I'm very, very excited. The kids that you have now and that I'll get in two years, they will be able to do this. I, I will be able to dive right in. Yeah. And I am so, so excited about that. Yeah, I think, um, I think that is... Uh, for me, uh, I had experience watching not this program, but a research-based reading program get implemented where good, pro good pieces were in place previously, but not a comprehensive program. And that was one of the things that I saw is it really picks up the pace and kids can mostly keep up. And then there's a bunch of tools to help those that are struggling. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and speaking on all the materials that they supply, it, like when I first started Wonders in my old district, I'm like, you get overwhelmed, like we said. There's just so <laughs> just much. so much stuff. It's so much stuff. But as you work through it, one of our uh, professional development people that are helping our school, she was, she was like, Black, just focus on these two things. This is what you need. And as we become more comfortable with it, we can start adding in the yeah. different pieces, yeah, that's the great gesture. pieces. Yeah. Now you grab exactly. this. Now you grab yeah. this. Because it's honestly just like responsive classroom. You don't want to try everything at once because mm -hmm. then you won't be good at it. Yeah. Focus on the one thing. Focus on the main story. Mm -hmm. Get really good at that. Once you're good at that, move on to the next thing. Like the leveled readers, get really good at that. Yeah. Uh, there's just so many aspects that I'm taking one at a time. I'm getting better and better. Mm -hmm. Am I perfect at it? By no means, but I'm getting better each year that I teach it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I really appreciate uh, that because I've been aware of how big an ask it has been um, of the staff um, uh, on top of two previous years of big asks for flexibility with COVID. Um, it's just there's a lot that gets expected of our elementary classroom teachers. Um, and uh, Carrie, so this one's for you. Um, uh, so, uh, I, I am curious your thoughts, actually, I'll, I'll give you a choice. One thing I'd really like to hear, because I know you know a lot about this, is uh, the, the research into quality reading and writing instruction and what is most effective and um, how we kind of uh, ended up with a research-based program, um, but also just what it's like on, from the teacher perspective of weathering a new initiative like this. Um, so either one or maybe both, I don't they know. They can go together. All right, I, great. I think it, it, it was a big ask at the beginning of the year. It, it, it's a big change, but I think we've really partnered with Sue Christinger for our professional development. She's the tra piece. trainer we have. Yes, and yeah. she'll be with us all year. We've made a commitment to work with her for an entire school year. Yeah. And she brings a component of not only a trainer, but also lived it as a classroom teacher. Mm -hmm. So she can speak to all our grade levels of try this one piece and work to develop your skills there. Um, having a comprehensive program provides an abundance of resources for all of our teachers to meet their needs in how they teach. Mm -hmm. So you can go from one classroom to another to another. All the children are working on the same standards, mm -hmm. but using a resource that is comfortable for the teacher that is evidence-based and research-based, but it varies. It could be a whole class instruction. It could be small group. It could be one-on-one -on -one instruction. We have supplemental instruction for our English language learners and our special education students. So it's a valued approach that we're seeing also implemented beyond our classrooms and into our unified arts program as well oh. who will be picking up the research component of writing and will be integrating the exact platform of wonders right into the library media curriculum wow and th that that uh as a uh, student of curriculum development in my work and as a um uh, as the superintendent um, having that consistency of language across grades and out into unified arts class um, uh, and knowing without a doubt that it is um, uh, based upon best practice research is so reassuring. And uh, just one quick additional thing is I had the chance with um, 
uh, Principal Van Vranken, Van Vranken to walk through the, uh, the whole first grade the other day, and uh, I saw exactly what you're talking about, which, is, which was a whole bunch of different techniques, seven uh, techniques um, of, uh, it was you know, reading lessons across the board, um, but all aimed towards that same goal and all with that, that foundation in place. So I'm going to ask a, a question similar to the one I asked before for anybody. Um, so uh, uh, parents wanting to be helpful who might be watching this or grandparents uh, uh, or uh, anyone in the community who wants to help with kids uh, learning to read. Um, what what uh, might we ask for um, that would be uh, a helpful way to um, help kids um, keep moving forward and become uh, masterful readers and lovers of reading? Um, I, as a third grade teacher, I like I don't want to stress families out. I don't want to put too much on families like you have to do this every night. Yeah. I, but I always say I strongly encourage, and I'm sure you would agree, when they <laughs> read with your child yeah. before bed. They're reading to you, you reading to them, reading together. That we see such a huge difference. I can tell this reading students with. That, yes. Reading mm -hmm. with. This, that's the, the biggest thing a parent can do mm -hmm. is is reading with their child. Mm -hmm. So. And so. Um, if, uh, if a parent is still struggling and saying, so what does that even look like? Um, someone who, you know, doesn't, uh, isn't uh, an educator. Like, do they have to go find special books or what, what should the reading be? Something that I do at parent-teacher conferences, and it's like a nice connecting time with those families. And I say, even with whether they're a lower reader, higher reader, I'm like, these are some, I have actually some um, suggestions on paper mm -hmm. of like questions you can ask, mm -hmm. activities you can do mm -hmm. to suggest to families that help with reading at home. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they're like, I'm like, do you want one or two? They're like, we'll take them all. I'm like, all right. And, uh -huh. and I, I families think most teachers that. do have um, something yes. similar that they have given to their families yeah. to help out with that. because. It's a task. We know reading with your kids at school is very different than reading with your own child at home. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, it, doing anything with your own child at home, yeah. as a matter of fact, is, is different than working with your kids here. So yeah, we, we've given them some tools to help them at home with that and be able to support. Yeah. But again, it's just that connecting together mm -hmm. with the parent and the child mm -hmm. or the siblings um, that makes it seem important and it is important. Makes it important, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I picture this. It's like shoulder to shoulder, yep. and you got the words in front mm -hmm. of you. And um, I, I, I forget I, getting taught this by a, a, I think it was a first grade teacher when I was raising mine. Like struggle over a word, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. follow with Absolutely. your finger, yep. um, because that's how it works. Yep. Um, I just, I really appreciate this, and I want all four of you to know um, how uh, I, I know this is a big ask. Um, and uh, I, um, I'm very grateful because it's, um, it's the right next step, uh, and here we are taking it. Uh, and I wanted to share this uh, episode in particular uh, because the, uh, the good people watching this show, uh, the residents here in Pelham, uh, through supporting our budget, is why we were able to invest in this program, and uh, I wanted to make sure that people could see what we've been working on here. So I'm Chip McGee, this is Pelham School District Today, and thank you for watching.